Hey guys, this is going to be a random ramble video. Um, I got asked to make this by someone who I think is a pretty strong player or could be. But, and then, you know, with the tournament coming up and which you should definitely go join, by the way, you know, sign up here. Everyone should join the tournament. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, with the tournament coming up, I kind of want to make this video because I think there's a lot of concepts that people don't understand just playing normal lobbies that is very applicable in these tournament games. And it's because you don't get a lot of reps in them that I think a lot of people struggle and they may falter or whatever. So I think we're going to just... This is going to be very much a ramble video. I don't have a script. I've pulled up some games I want to reference, but for the most part, unscripted. Let's see how it goes. But So, whoops. What the fuck? Okay. So, I, I built, like, a little map here, and I'm going to reference this in a little bit. But I think, in general, like, when you're playing, there's two real ways to win. And, and oh, just hold on. Uh, uh, let me... As a disclaimer, this is not for new players at all. This is for people who are going to be playing the tournament and trying to win. This is not a new player guide. If you watch this as a new player, you'll probably just be really confused. And um, I would not have this impact your game until you've got a very solid foundation of how the game works, how the meta currently is, and you know stuff like that. Okay. So you have two strong plays. You have fast, tall, and then wide, strong. That's kind of what I call them. And these are kind of like two archetypes that I think both have very good chances of winning. I think so far we've seen wide, strong just be completely dominant, right? This is your wide honor. This is your order. This is your, um, what the fuck is, what am I doing? Okay. This is your order. This is your um, uh, Liberty players that go piety second. This is resettlements, right? Also, just an FYI, this is like coastal as well. These kind of concepts all work in tandem. Um, and then you have fast tall, and this is your apostolic piety. This is your tradition. Um, yeah. And I think in general, like the only two, the only three trees that are really possible for fast tall is like honor second and patro second. I commerce for sure could work. I just think you're too big of a target if you do commerce, um, where you you'll get you'll hundred percent get teams. You'll kill the guy too fast. Um, and honestly, like it feels like whenever we play like tall commerce, a lot of times it just feels like your goal just runs out of steam. You lack the cities to place bombers, but I, I I'm not saying commerce can't work. Of course, commerce can work in the right lobby and in the right civ and in the right map. Of course, it can work. I just think in general, like you're you're better off just playing honor second or patro second. Patro to speed up your game and give you a potential win con for later on. Honor because it's just you know it's inevitable you're going to be fighting. May as well have discipline. May as well get some meals. Wide strong. I mean, this is obvious. This is so stock standard. I don't know. I'm going to touch on this, but I, the the caveat I'm going to make. And I don't want anyone to get offended by this if you're watching this video, but if you, I don't want to like gatekeep anyone, but realistically, I think there's maybe f 10 total people in NQ that could play a, a good enough fast tall game to win a, win a tournament. Um, like to win the finals. Like, I think there's like five, like there's five to 10 people total. Um, So, unless I talk to you very regularly, you're probably not one of these people. And even if I do, you're also probably not one of these people. So, odds are you're probably not one of these people that can actually play this. Because you need to have such incredible sim. You need like this is the definition of everything going right in a game. Like I'm talking like unis by 65 or or 67 with workshops up, right? Like you're getting arties at the very latest on turn 90 fucking 93 or 94 
Um, or you're getting land chips at the very latest by 110. Right, like, and, and like, realistically, like, people, m- most people aren't good enough to pull this off, and and that's fine. We've seen most, like, this has won the least amount of games by far. Um, I think wide strong in general is just easier to play. It's substantially uh, more consistent, um, and it's what most people are doing. So I, I think, I think this is fine, right? Um, and. And just NFI, like this is this is for like most games. I'm gonna talk about like fringe cases as, as well, such as when you can do aesthetics and stuff like that. But for the most part, like these are your two options. Like when you when you load into the game, this is what you should be thinking. And just an FYI, like this is only you need to have like at minimum an eight out of ten cap to even to you need an eight out of ten cap to even think about doing this. Okay, like. In my opinion, you need an eight out of ten capital to even like attempt doing this and and expecting to win. Um, minimum, minimum. And frankly, like you need to have like incredible. Like if you think back to, I, I don't have the fucking vod because Frank won't message me back on Discord. But, but um, if you think back to the finals of the tournament, I think Sira is the only person with good enough land to have done fast haul. And he chose to do wide strong anyway. But the point is, like, Sierra 100% could have done fast tall. Like, he's the only person that had the land to do it. Okay? So, on average, one maximum two people are going to have the land to be able to do this play. So, most of the time, it's not you. So, just just keep that. In, so, if it's not you, you have to play wide strong. Like, I don't I don't give a fuck what you think. You, they, you have to do this. I'm talking, you can go wide piety, you can go wide honor, you can go wide liberally, whatever you want, but you have to play wide, okay? And and the reason here, the reason why I'm saying you can't go fast haul is because you need to have a really good game and you need to fucking make sure you're faster than really good players playing wide, right? Like, if you're not confident enough in your tradition to beat fucking Six City Liberty Miota to, to Artie, don't play it. Like it's that simple. Um, because realistically, Miota like it joins these lobbies. Like, and and the thing about Civ that's really cool to me is like it's a it's a pretty small community. It's at least like at at the high levels, like there's a small. Com- it's a pretty small community. Like, um, I kind of want to pull up the the rankings and stuff. Yeah, fuck it, I'll pull it up. Um. Do, do, do. Where the fuck did we post these? Okay. So if we go, like, okay. I think this top 22 is, I think we're going to see a lot of, like, I, I would bet you, um, at least 15 or 16 of these players are going to be in the next top 21 of these top 22 players. I think at minimum 15 or 16 are going to make it. Okay. So you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a very consistent fault. Like, there's some people that like, you know, definitely could make that cut if they're not here. That's why I said like 15. Um, I, so I, the, 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 the player base is very competitive and I still think there's very large skill gaps between players in general. Um, so if we go back, like you have to make sure you're, you're good enough to even like compete with, uh, for fast, it, like for fast haul, like you, you have to make sure you're good enough to compete with literally the best players in the game playing their comfort. So that's why I said not many people can pull this off. Also, um, <laughs> what one concern about this wide strong stuff is if you have too good of a game, you'll get teamed at already. And if you get teamed at Artie, you instantly lose. So, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second, but pretty much like you can't have too good of a game. It's like a balancing act. Obviously, you want your game to be as, as really good and as good as possible, but you don't want it to be too good where everyone just teams you, okay? And this obviously works with map dynamics and whatnot, but for the most part, like, yeah. Okay, um... For fast tall, like uh, this again, none of this should be a surprise, but 
Arties and land ships, you have to do it like nine times out of ten. You're doing arties or land ships. Literally, like you, I, I can't express this. You never go fucking labs, unless you're playing aesthetics and you have like a god tier start. Everyone is killing each other. Unless the world is at war, you are never going labs, because you have to steal them. If you don't steal labs, like you're irrelevant, or I mean, and someone else has them, like. It's fine. You can kill the world with normal tanks. You don't need fucking modern armor. Um, Because remember, we're we're picking autocracy. Freedom is fucking dog shit. Complete bait. In order, you don't want to play on fucking four cities or five cities. So you always pick auto. Like That's why I think going factories first is so important on in tournament lobby. Like, Sistine is not a bait, but it almost it feels like it almost is because it's it's off the factory path and missing out on auto it can just be like fucking disastrous, right? I mean the nice thing about wide strong is you have flexibility with order auto. Um, again, there's no freedom. Freedom does not exist. Like most of the time, you're gonna have five players at the very end. Some some scrubs gonna try like thinking that they can win with freedom. The aesthetics player is obviously gonna take freedom if there is one, but most of the time there won't be. So someone's gonna get left with freedom, and that just fucking sucks if that's you. But just don't get left with freedom. Simple enough. Um, most of the time, like yeah, li- like literally, you are always going land chips or already because this is how the game ends. Like, and you, if you're for a city, you need to end the game fast because. A lot of times you're going to enter these stale states where people are kind of just like looking at each other. But when people are looking at each other and not doing anything, you're losing. Right? Fast Hall is losing if you're not doing anything. You have to be proactive on this build. And it's almost like being proactive in the wrong decision is better than not being proactive at all. Um, So... For why I th- the thing about this is it's like it's more important to not get teamed than it is to be in the best spot. Um, I'd rather get slammed than get teamed. Like I'd rather get slammed than the person ears or like stops boring me because I defend and then play than get teamed because getting teamed is just the easiest way to lose. Um, a, a, like a bunch a, a couple good players teaming you when they both are trying to kill you. You you can't like it's not possible to defend. Right, it, it, teaming only fails when people are half-assing the attack. Okay, I mean, the fucking, oops. Um, the biggest instance of this is this. Fucking everyone's gonna know what I'm talking Always. about here. Where was it? Did Gallery do it? So his space timing could actually be quite. I think okay, they're they're too far into space at this point, but. The, everyone knows, like, Arvius is fucking atrocious push into Galfat while Syrah just got absolutely obliterated. You know, like, <laughs> that should that should fucking... I, I could try to find the clip, but, uh, you know, it's on Gao's channel. I'm sure ev- everyone's kind of seen it. I streamed it. Um, like, the, best, the most impressive part about this from Gao is that he's getting attacked by Arvius, but Arvius literally would just, like, hit him with infantry. Like, he was, like, if Arvius did fucking anything, if Arvius did anything to push Gao, Gao dies, right? Like, Syra kind of got, Syra was also kind of half-assing this attack, right? Gao has more ships than the coast, like, than the guy whose whole play is to kill him, right? Like, that doesn't make sense, because Gao also has to defend inland. So, if Arvius was, you know, not half-assing this, if Syra wasn't half-assing this, they both, like, Gao instantly dies, but... The, the thing is, Civ is not a game where everyone plays the objectively correct thing. Um, you know, like, it's all about playing the lobby. You have to understand, like, I, and this is something that is you can't really teach. You kind of have to learn. It's, like, a, it's very much a learned skill. But I think the most important skill to have is the ability to understand how strong someone is at any given moment. Because that kind of tells you what they what they're thinking, right? If you understand, hey, this person's pretty fucking weak. Like, they, you know, are they're gunning it for factories, right? Like, maybe they just bought a factory. Maybe they, they they're like honor liberty honor or something. They're, they didn't finish honor yet. It's turn one hundred and ten or something like that. Like they have one. Po- like they're they're having a weak game, right? They might have pretty good demos, but you have to understand, like this person is like 
is feeling pressured. And and there's no way to know that and there's no way to understand like what could be going through their heads unless you play the game a lot and you've played these late games out. And frankly, you understand who you're playing against, right? Um I think in general like the average and the average tournament um tourney lobby is going to have I don't know, like I'd say two to three top level players like the av like the average tournament and, and honestly this is probably like like about two <laughs> like i'm gonna round down i i'm pretty i'm kind of a dick when it comes to like like assessing people's skill levels but i i think on average like the normal like there's some lobbies yes of course there's some like we had a fucking lobby last tournament it was like me hawks achilles and l and Ashwin. And Ashwin can definitely play. L is like one of the best players. Achilles is the guy who won the last tournament. Hawks is probably one of like the top three NA players. And then there's me. Like, like five players that could definitely win the game. Um that that like those games are an are an exception, of course. Like, you know, there was there's multiple games like that have had really stacked lobbies. But on average, you're gonna get a lot of randoms. You're gonna get a lot of like people who are new to the new to NQ and like on average, it's going to be like two people that can, um, that are like, you know, in that top 15 I was talking about, or that are going to, you know, place in the top 21, 15 of those players. And then you're going to get like one or two, one or two ad additional ones that can potentially win, right? And then you're going to get, one to two or like two to three that instantly lose turn zero. Okay. And this might be like mean, but this isn't supposed to make you like feel bad. This is just kind of the reality of like these tournament lobbies. Um, and the, the reason why is because if the game goes late enough, um, the top players are always going to win. Because there's so much you have to be thinking about late game that unless you've got a lot of reps in it or you've been like pre like preparing for a while, you're not going to be ready for. And you're just going to get, you know, something's going to happen. You're going to get run over or like, you know, you're not going to think and then a nuke fucking hits your stealth stacks and you're just instantly, you just instantly lose. Or, you know, you didn't see, you didn't nuke one of the cities and then, you know, the spy just popped up and then you get XCOM dropped on and then it's just fucking doomed, right? Like, or you take a capital and then they instantly win the game because you took their capital and they needed a blast off and an expand. Like there's so many like different things that could happen in a Civ game, which makes this game so incredibly crazy. Um, and it's so much fun, but you wouldn't experience it unless you've played a lot. So because of that, like two to three people are not going to win. Like they, they don't even, they, Frankly, they don't have a chance. <laughs> On average, there's going to be two players who are expected to win, and then one or two others in addition to them that could challenge that if they get really lucky. Maybe they these guys ear each other. Um, maybe these two players ear each other. Like uh, there was a game with um, Frank and Oru, and Frank and Oru Oru just instantly earward since like turn ten, right? And, and then Zitz ended up winning. And Zitz is definitely one of those players, like, that they, he's definitely one of the one or two players that could addition, like potentially win the game. Like, Zitz actually won the game with me, too, in it. Because um, I hear word cushy. So, like, there's a number of variables that can happen. But in most of the time, like, people, like, even if they have good sim or, like, their sim's not irrelevant or whatever, they're likely just going to fucking lose. And and, and it's, it's just kind of the reality. And... But, but you have to understand this when you're joining these lobbies. You have to understand, okay, like, who do I actually have to watch out for? And then who sh who can I probably just kill for free? And when you see a free kill, you pretty much always want to fucking take it. Because you can kind of disguise a free kill, like I did here. Um, Where is my game? Here. This is a game I played with. Uh, I don't even remember who's in it. That's kind of the. It, it, this was like this is a pretty weak lobby, subbed. Um, 
I'm purified and are likely like the two other people that could contend this game. Everyone else, like no offense, but like these other players are really don't, I don't think they, they could win. Um, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I don't, I don't think they could win the game. Um, if, if everything kind of like goes as expected and of course it doesn't always happen, but you know, most of the time. So what happened in this game was I killed, I, I went honor on pretty mediocre land um, and then I ended up just killing Russo for free. But what happened was I kind of slow rolled my sim where I wasn't recovering very fast. Like I think it's turn 92. I'm teching leaning. Like it's pretty fucking here. I, I got cysteine though, but so it's 101. I just hit industrial. This is not, this is not relevant by any sense of their imagination. But I think the point here is like, I'm not, I don't care about my sim. I, I need my sim to be weak. I need to make sure that these guys aren't going to turn on me. Um, so I'm kind of playing the, this dynamic in the sense that like, okay, how do I lose this game? The way I lose is if PTZ and Purified both just team me for no reason right now. So I need to kind of sandbag my game. So it's, it's worse than expected. And then out of nowhere, right? Out of nowhere. Oh, my GPT is 700 per turn and I got planes and land ships and I got, I think I got real tanks by 130 with planes and like a shitload of money. So, or it, it was a slow game anyway. Like, you know, I think purified was gifted oil by someone. So it wasn't a fast game as it was, but the point is like, I'm, I'm intentionally, I don't care about having the best sim. I don't care about pulling ahead. I know if I make it to the very end of the game, I'm going to win. I have more reps in late game than them. I, you know, understand like how to win the game in my opinion better than them. I think I trust myself that if I get to the late game, I'm just going to win. So I needed to make sure that the last thing that happens is I get teamed too early. You know, eventually I get teamed. Um, yeah, here, but I still am able to kill them. I'm, I'm holding off PTZ up north. Like you can see that up there. So the, the point still stands. You have to make sure, like, the most important skill is, again, understanding how strong someone is at any given moment. I knew throughout that entire game, I could not be attacked by PTZ. I knew I could not be attacked by Purified. I knew I had to be the aggressor, right? And I got to pick when I go. So, you know, I actually got surprised by the oil gifting thing, but, you know, it didn't matter in the end. There was enough, um, there was enough gap between us. But the point here and one thing i'd like to make an, uh, another note of is um as the game progresses individual control what the fuck is going on individual control of how like of the situation slowly decreases so i actually learned this from arvius um a while ago but the reason why classical war is so good is because it puts you in a position where you can really control the game the later and later you get, the more powerful the units are, the more likely it is that someone who's been irrelevant this whole time just magically comes back, steals a bunch of techs, kills you for free or whatever. Like, there's so many more variables the later in the stage and later in the game you go, and it's harder to really control everything early on. That's why in this game, you know, I really put a lot of emphasis on artillery. Um, most of my games I'm going already are, are land ships. Usually it's Artie because I am a really strong Artie player. But the reason is, is if it gets too late where there's two people pushing space, I know from my experience, it's unlikely I'm going to be able to kill them both before one of them blasts off. So I have to kind of, you have to kind of get it down when you're, when you're doing Dom, right? Dom like really likes, um, like four player end games. Uh, and this is what we saw with, uh, in the finals of the last tournament, right? Like this is why Achilles won. This is why Asira was likely to win. Um, domination loves four player end games and, and, and smaller because there's less light. It's so much less likely that someone's able to sneak a victory con or slow the game down enough that there's a, a win con, right? And if we go over to... Is it 
I don't need to show this one anymore. This beautiful game. Who's this in here? I guess that's me. Um, you know, like the the priority here for me was how, first of all, how do I get Hoy not to slam me? And second of all, what can I do that I'm in the middle of the map? And I'm going to talk about this when we talk about map placements and stuff. But when when the game that gets to the end game, there's four players left at the end. But by this point, it's kind of too late. We have because uh, you know it wasn't until land ships that both players died, and it's not like either player that killed the other respective player had enough momentum to keep going. With the exception of Miota, Miota kind of got manhandled by by Hoy at the end there. But you know. Amhost didn't die until land ships. I didn't die, or I mean, um, Tom didn't die until planes. So by that point, it's kind of like too late. And, you know, if I was going for Dom, Dom could have been a victory con for someone. But because I was going Diplo slash space and um, Abraxas was going science, because the game leads aren't dictating they wanted to uh, domination, it's unlikely a Dom player could win. Um, and, when we talk about like alternative win cons other than domination, like the most important thing is understanding what the game lead is trying to do because the game leader dictates the whole pacing, right? If you have, so um, to, to wrap this up before I move on to something else, but like, you know, compo war allows you to be in control of the game from an earlier stage. The problem is you might get teamed. So it's all about balancing, getting teamed and, pulling away from the pack um, enough to control the game and control the pace of the game. Um, oops. So, you know, when we get to alternative win cons and stuff, I, I, it really depends on map position. So everyone knows that the best map positions are in the corners, right? If you had to pick where you want to be, you want to be in these corners. Why? Because if you're trying to do, and it's very simple, and this is where we get into the game theory side of things. So if you're still following, great. If you're not, whatever. Um, if you're trying to do aesthetics in the middle, unless you have like giga defense, I mean fucking like disgustingly defensive land. Like you need to have like a wall of mountains like in from one of the sides where like, okay, like, Player four can't ever push me, right? And then, like, a ton of hills and shit. Like, I don't fucking know. Like, you need to have, like, super... Like, almost impossibly... Almost, like, to the point where your game would suck because the land's like that. Um, that you could actually pull aesthetics off in the middle. I've done it before. I'm not saying it's not possible, but the reason why it's bad is because if you make it to the late game, like, let's say, like... I don't know. For the sake of discussion, like let's like let's play this out like realistically. Let's say like player three killed this, and then player one. Um, oftentimes, there's two two people dead. So like player one did this. The reason is because it's very easy to say, hey, let's just go eat this guy real quick, and then figure this shit out and enter our teaming triangle. You understand? Like this is so fucking common, and because you're in the middle of the map, you just get easily teamed, and because your aesthetics, you're weak as fuck, so you can't defend it. Even if they're half-assing it, you're likely going to win. Uh, again, I've won aesthetics before, but the map really has to be something like... Uh, uh, you, ha you have to be game lead. You have to be science lead. Like, Okay, let me just like write this out. Aesthetics needs um, science lead. Rest of, wo of world. Ear killing each other. That, that's how you win aesthetics. You want to know why this game? Well, okay, I, I, I honestly misplay this. Like, Amhos should never have had a chance in the first place, if not for that fucking musician bulb or whatever. Uh, but, like, the reason why this didn't work for Amhos is because, one, there's a lot of people left. And, two, me and Abraxas were in perfect positions just to kill him. And this is like, he's, Amos has perfect position here. It's annoying as fuck for me to push in because of this, this river system. There's a lot number of hills. 
right? Abraxas has to go a pretty far distance to kill the other coastal player. Like he's got to really isolate. On. Like this is perfect defensive terrain for um, for an aesthetics play- push, and it still failed. And Amhos was tech lead. You know, he had he was wonder whoring, right? So you for aesthetics, you need to be like the like this is like probably the most important thing. Like the rest of the world has to be killing each other and going ear or whatever. Right. And this is what we saw in my victory condition with Diplo. Right. Um, like the rest of the world was killing each other. Miyoto was killing Hoy. Braxis was free simming on science. I, and he wasn't doing anything to me. And I was just kind of chilling. No one expected me to win. That's what made this actually work. Um, so how, how does how does like map position actually like help you win or help you lose well the first thing is if you're player one here the best thing you can do is kill player four right killing player th- um killing player two would open you up to player three player five and player four but killing player four would just leave you open to two and five you're pretty much isolated on the map i've had games like this and like especially if like one of these are coastal like then you're kind of just against five because two isn't going to make a coastal an, like an, an amphibious push into one like this just doesn't make sense um and I, so i've had games like this where pretty much um i think whoops it was i i was in player two spot i killed player one we had uh coastal Um, we had coastal and we had coastal which means player six realistically can't get to me because no one's like settling this area in the middle right this is like i think this is all like cs um god i'm I'm left-handed and i use the right-handed mouse so bear with me um so player six isn't able to push into me what i'm able to do here is i'm able to like i I was honor i am able to uh, this is old naria like this is so stupid um I was able to get like Hemeji, Defender, and then I kind of just sat there, and they they like no one could touch me. And then I just killed player four, and then I swept through the whole map, right? And like this is how you play. Like you you can't have like there's no reason for me to push my lead too early because then the world teams on me. I kill one player. I'm marginally ahead of everyone else. I'm 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 ahead. But not so much that it gets me teamed, right? And that's, like, the important thing. Not that, you know, teaming me was much of an option here in the first place, but, you know, still. Um, Okay, so one other thing. If you're in the middle of the map, um, why didn't I just undo? If you're in the middle of the map, what options do you have? That's a good question. Um, So the most common one is why it's strong, right? So, like... Honestly, like, if you're in the middle of the map, you should kind of just be thinking, like, right off the gate, wide strong. Right? In my last finals game, like, I knew my land sucked. I couldn't play tall. I had to go wide strong, so I play, I went, like, 7 to the honor. Right? And, like, was that the right play? 100%. So, you have to be going wide strong. I think the only exception is if your land is, like, a 10 out of 10, and you can do one of these fast tall games where you just, like, absolutely just obliterate someone. Um, I, I, I truly don't think in most, like in 99% of cases, unless, unless it's like, unless you're, you know, playing in a lobby with complete new players, which shouldn't happen in a tournament. Right. But unless you're playing in a lobby with like complete new players, you should never even be in a position where you could play like aesthetics in the middle of the map. And even against new players, like (laughs) playing aesthetics in the middle of the map, when you're like clearly game lead, just gets you five times teamed, which has happened to me. It's not even like it, it, it kind of feels bad, right? Like you're like, I should have just won this lobby. Like I should have just went land ships. Like as you say to yourself, as you die to a bunch of scrubs, like <laughs> it's, it's not a fun time. Um, so I like what, what options do you have? It, it's always wide strong. And in my opinion, I think you can go tall, but it needs to be one of those games where um, I can actually pull it up. Um, I played a game kind of recently. Yeah, this one. So this is just a tradition game. Uh, it was like mostly an in-house too. But what happened was, it's just a fast tradition game. I get Artie's on ninety-five, so like pretty good. I pretty good Artie timing. With with a lot of money, because um, I have a merchant over here, 
So, you know, what's significant about this game and why am I referencing it? I'm game lead. I'm hammer lead. I'm dictating the pace of the game. I'm having a really strong game on why on on tall. And I'm forcing all of my neighbors to go arty. They have to go arty. They have to respect the they it's not like they can just go muskets and then factories. No. They have to go arty because my game is so incredibly powerful and so much further ahead than everyone else's that if they don't go arty, they instantly fucking lose. So I'm forcing them all arty to me. I'm actually forcing Ashwin, who's a, a, like above fucking Mega, to also go arty. Because he knows I'm going to run through Mega and I'm just going to kill him next. So I'm instantly making three people irrelevant, essentially. And I'm still going to walk through them. That's the kind of game you need to play tall in the middle of the map. And this is honestly, from, this is from the um, bottom right. So it's not even like a standard tall game. Um, it's not even like a middle of the map game, but like that—that's that, kind of the game you need to have. It, and it's not like relative to like all games. It's just relative to that lobby. It has to be stronger. But again, there's no way to know how strong that is until you really you know get into the weeds and like see everyone's land and whatnot. Um, also, like player quality definitely matters. Like, you know, this is a pretty strong lobby by you know everyone, any anyone who plays the standards. So. The fact that this is possible and like in this lobby def means it's definitely possible in, in, in an average tournament lobby. Um, okay. So what, what, what do we mean here by like, like when would you pick Diplo? Like I, I personally think Diplo is great in the middle of the map. Um, again, let's go back to this game. I, I'm middle of the map here. I've, how many cities am I on? I know. I think, I think I settled eight. Um, and then I s killed two of Amhosa City, so I'm on 10 here. Um, what, what's good about middle of the map Diplo is you have access to a lot of additional quests that you wouldn't normally, right? You have trade route quests that are easier to get. You have, um, it's easier to clear camps for more, for more CS. Um, you have access, you meet all the, all the players a lot easier. You have an easier time scouting, etc. So, Petro is actually really good for middle of the map, and it's especially good when you have a lot of inherent culture gen and a lot of culture quests, uh, CS. We talked about this in um, one of the – I don't know. who. It depends who's watching this. I'm sure a lot of new players are also watching this, but we mentioned this a lot in our um, Learning Lek Mod series where the best time to pick Petro second is when there's about two or three cultural CS that you can get as allies because that helps you fill out the rest of the tree or progress into a different one. It kind of snowballs itself, right? It's kind of like how the best thing for honor is more city states because the courthouses kind of build themselves in a way, right? Because um, you know it, it just keeps snowballing. And it's the same thing with this culture and uh, the culture and the CS allies. Okay, so anyway, I, I think in general, like this is why we said Petro Second's actually pretty good um, in the game in that tournament final. I actually go Liberty Petro. Um, I wasn't sure about filling out all of Petro, but having an alternative win con in the middle of the map, especially, is very important because it's likely that the people on the side are going to be, you know, thinking space at the end anyway, right? They only have to worry about two people at most, usually, unless it's, you know, a coastal empire or whatever, right? But those are, those kind of games are already a little sus, um, especially with how frequent taxing is in the end game. But, Anyway, I'm kind of getting on a tangent here, but the point is in the middle of the map, having an alternative win con is very good. The only one that actually exists, because again, you're not playing aesthetics in the middle of the map, is Diplo. So I think Diplo in general is really strong in the middle of the map. I think it's actually weaker in the, in the sides. I think having a side, so like the best thing you can do, like we said before, is if you're on the edge of the map, is kill the player directly above you, or if it's a, you know, inverse oriented map um kill the person directly to your right or left um that way you kind of in control this entire thing and you're only ever worried about two people what this does is it puts an, a tremendous amount of pressure on the two people in the middle because not only are they worried about each other they're also worried about the people back here because the people over here have to get to the other player on the end so you're essentially making two players in the middle extremely stressed um their, their end games are kind of just up in the air. Frankly, it's incredibly hard to win a game from the middle of the map for this reason alone, right? Um, 
This is why when in the last finals, when Sira killed, um, when Sira killed Hoy here, I knew I'm fucked. I I, I knew I'm 100 fucked. Like, <laughs> it, it's a similar type of dynamic, right? Because what this is doing is Sira is kind of putting himself, um, able to get attacked by Achilles, which means if Achilles wants to get over to this side of, and obviously Miyota killed Gao. What this does is like it makes Sira need to get over here, which again you have to get through me. <laughs> and if Achilles wants to kill Sira, he's and he still eventually has to kill Miyota. So he has to get through me too. No one was going for Alterna to win cons. I think Miyota potentially could have flexed a space victory if he changed how he was playing and didn't push into me for no reason, but that's besides the point. Um Okay. So where were we? Let's just go over a couple games real quick. Um I, I picked out a couple games. All of these are in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Um, uh, it's called NQFFA Tournament 2 Commentary Games. Um, so this is like, this is one of the things. This is where I was saying, um, You're like you know, game dynamics are really weird. So what happened this game was Achilles was having a pretty rough time. Mega was having probably one of the best games I've ever seen. Um, just full stop, one of the best games I've ever seen. And this kind of goes to show, like, yeah, these tournament lobbies are legit as fuck. Like, the best players are playing the best that they can. Um, they're trying as hard as they can. Mega, Mega even said to me after the game, he's like, yeah, I think this is probably some of the best sim I've ever had. So what happened this game was uh, Hoy killed Lumpin uh, at Chariots. And Actimel killed Molly, and it looked pretty irrelevant. Like, the war looked really sus. But what that does is because Mega's having such an insane game, he's put as game. He's like, what the fuck is going on? He's essentially just sit free simming, but he's making himself, like, so tremendously far ahead. And because he went artillery, which I do think is correct, because he went artillery into Achilles... Right, so this is this is what happened in this game. Six killed three. Four killed one. Okay, and now five killed two. Right? And five is game lead. He's just going to get teamed. Right? It's, it's so hard in this spot for Mega. Um, you know, like, it, it, it's so incredibly difficult. And, and and he still he could have done it. I, I I stand by the fact I think Mega could have won this game. Instead, Hoy ended up winning, and you know, um, we saw his performance in the finals. If you know what I'm saying. No, I'm kidding. Um, Hoy played fine. I think Sierra just had super crazy land. Um, but you know, I, like this is like this is a classic scenario where your game is literally too good, and you're just you're hurting yourself by playing well. <laughs> like. Ultimately, that's what it is. Um, you gave Hoy like too much time to recover and whatnot. Like, I think one of the one of the themes about Civ in late game is just keep going with what you're trying to do. And by that, I mean, you know, I, I, I saw, like, people saying he should really just piece Actimel here. Fuck no. Fuck no, he pieces Actimel. He keeps going. He's He fucking, he should be negotiating with Hoy the entire time, but he keeps going. If he ever takes his foot off the gas, he instantly loses. Right? And here's why. Um, we don't need this game anymore. Here's why. Uh, we have a game right here. Um, Miyota, Lumpin, Alex, Blaze, Purify, Dart Effect. Lumpin and Miyota are probably the two best players. Uh, Alex and Purify can contest a win for sure. Um, what happens? Miyota says to himself, hey, uh, I think the only person that can really contest my win is Lumpin. So I'm just going to slam him around like like fucking a complete degenerate for 
50 fucking turns at crossbows. And um, hopefully uh, hopefully nothing else happens. And, and that's exactly what happened. But what happened was Alex on the other side of the map killed Purify. You know, then he was going to go kill Dartifact. But he took so long. And even with Miota's disgustingly long ear war and whatnot, he was still able to bounce back into the game and kill Alex later on. Right? Like, he was able to team up with... This is why teaming stupid. Um, he was able to team up with Dartifact because they're both behind, right? And then they pushed Alex back, and then Alex lost a lot of momentum, and then Dartifact eventually died, and then, you know, Miota killed him. So even if you're really behind, it's still possible to come back. This is why I hate when people are relevant out in these tournament games because it's so hard to be ear, right? Like, it, like there's another case here. So, um, we have Lucas, Kuba, Four Tons, Era, Frightsin, and Oru. Lucas and Kuba are probably the two best players. You have Era, Four Tons, and Oru who can contest a win, and Frightsin, who's a new player. Um, we have a case where Era and Kuba are warring. We also had a case where. Oru just tried crossbowing uh, Vatican and just fucking completely failed and w got like turn 85 universities, right? Turn 85 universities. Like that, that should be like, I don't even, I think it may have been slower than that, honestly. Um, but he's still in the game. He's still able to potentially win, right? Like Kuba was having a really good game. Like um, he, after getting slammed all that time, uh, Meanwhile, Lucas is completely free simming, gets like really, really fast land ships, but um, wasn't able to convert it fast enough. And Spencer or Oru is still able to contest a win with this slow of a fucking game. He, like he completely crushed his game, but it, it didn't matter. Like he still could have won if he played this end game right with Kuba. Like they could have teamed Lucas and won, but both of them were pretty far behind. Lucas ended up beating them to nukes and whatnot, and ended up winning. Um, but I, I think this is an important point because everyone is still in the game. It, it's bizarre. It, it shouldn't be possible. But, but it, you know, Sib just kind of comes around. Like, the tech discount you get just for playing, for existing, or there, right? Um, and then this is a perfect case of, like, you know, who, who's strong in this lobby? This is a sad lobby. This is a sad game. Um, I think I started recording a little late but what happened this game was boris killed hoi polloi so it was hoi boris um bucket i think conrad is mario yoda and then some person i've never heard of so conrad got a free a super free kill on on um bucket and then boris Got a free kill, uh, not a free kill on Hoy, but he killed Hoy, like surprisingly easy. And Miyoto just was playing tradition on pretty mediocre land, and then ended up just winning the game because he was free simming, like hard, hard free simming, and no one even thought to get him. So like this is like one of those cases where Miyoto is clearly the most likely person to win, but game dynamics is what kind of just sets him apart from like losing. Like so, there's some games where it's like. In Miyota's case, like, doing nothing just won him the game, right? He just went commerce and, blew, like, killed him with bombers, right? And I think, um, yeah, like, this game is a fucking complete fiesta. But it, it was just, like, I don't know. It was just crazy. Um, but the point, the point I'm trying to make here is that, like, regardless how bad Miyota's sim was or good it was it didn't matter he won because let's just use our sheet here right miota's let's say miota's three right miota's three um oops oh, for fuck's sake. conrad killed this guy and then hoy killed this guy or boris killed hoy 
for some unknown reason, these two started fighting. And then this guy went ear. Miota just wins. Right? Like, so there's some cases where just being on the side of the map just let, lets you win. Like, this this is, this is feels wrong, right? Miota should not just have this free of a win. But because of his map position and game dynamics and Conrad having, like, pretty much his hand in everyone's in everyone's business like it, it it really hurt conrad here and i think you know this this game could have been played out if the players were different for sure but yoda did a good job playing the lobby and that's what's really important a lot of times so i think one last game i wanted to talk touch on a little bit um was this one this was a this was a tall um this is a phenomenal game by Glosson. He absolutely shit on Sira. It was so great to see. Um, he he just executed so perfectly um, with crossbows. Got really good timing. Was like having a fast game. But the problem he played this end war pretty bad. But you know, all things considered, I think he played incredibly incredibly well. But the point I'm trying to make here is he did not assess how strong Lumpen was. Right. Let's go back to my tournament win. When I'm playing this game, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about, okay, what do I need to win? How can I lose? Right? That that That's verbatim what I'm thinking about the whole time. I go gunpowder, or uh, I go gunpowder before I have, uh, before I have industrialization, um, I also went Sistine early. I don't want to get copyright, whatever, just because I don't want to get those fucking emails. Um, and here's here's one thing. Like, I saw some people being like, "You're really lucky, Hoy didn't attack you." I had pre builds in every city. I had barracks in every city. I was, you know, building a bunch of units. It's turn ninety two. Hoy ends up attacking on like, um. I think like 97, I can check. So I had a number of units. I think at the time I was top hammers. So not, it, it's going to be taxing for Hoy to attack either person. I, I'm second mill here. Um, I think it was 96. Because I, I wouldn't have bulbed industrial unless I saw him push. Um, so what, what what's important here? I'm understanding that... The way I lose is if Hoy slams me at Artie. Because if I if I if I lose tempo at Artie, I'm gonna be late to ideology, which means I'm not gonna have a chance to win. The other thing is um if I'm a free the only reason Hoy would attack me is if I'm a free kill. As we mentioned before, one of the worst things you can do is as player five is kill player two. Because what that does is it makes the whole world kill you. Not only that, let's say one of our other you know, friends, let's say like a random player like this is, is trying to do aesthetics, right? If player five kills player two, now not only is player three's responsibility killing aesthetics player, most of the time you have to team them. So because after turn 120, the aesthetics player is literally only building defensive units. So it's also now your job to deal with the aesthetics player. You don't want to have to deal with the aesthetics player. Fuck that. Right? You want to leave as many people able to deal with the aesthetics player as possible. So the best thing in this case player five could do is kill player four. Or kill the aesthetics player himself. Right? So all like all of those options are right. So I knew with you know, I'm player two here, Hoy is player three, Amhost is, is trying to do tourism. I knew from a map position standpoint, and, and Miota we know is commerce. Okay. So all and all this matters. Um so if Miota's commerce, that means he's going to do Dom, right? So he's going to do Dom. Dom. So if Miota's doing Dom, how does he win the game? He has to kill everyone, right? If Hoy is also doing Dom, how does he win the game? Well, he has to kill everyone too. What's the best way Hoy can win the game? The best way Hoy can win the game is by not interacting with Miota until the very end, right? They want both of them to be the last player that's alive. 
realistically, the best thing Hoy could have done is killed Abraxas, but Abraxas is pretty far away and he was coastal and doing resettlements and stuff. So I think the best Hoy did make the right decision. I think the best play was to kill if he if he was gonna already anyone, it was the right decision was to kill um was to kill Tom. Going for me, all that does is it makes Miota just kill Hoy next. So and then on top of that, like you have this this culture boy who's just like fuck, like he might actually win the game. Like so, when people say like, right, I think you, I don't think you prepared enough for Hoy or whatever. Like I think I prepared a lot. Like I I built units, I built at least one or two rounds of units in every single city. I had barracks up in every, in just about every city. Um, you know, I I felt like I was in a pretty good spot. That being said. Hoy would have instantly lost his game by killing me or trying to kill me. I think he would have eventually, but the point is that if he tries to killing me, he's just instantly irrelevant because from a map position standpoint, he cannot win unless his sim is far superior to everyone in the game. But again, this is the fucking finals of the tournament. Like it's everyone's going to have good sim. So you can't, you can't expect people to like be bad or roll over, right? You can't, expect that to happen you have to play around that but that being said and and this is the most important thing i'm going to say all the time regardless what's happening in the game regardless what what's what's going on you have to play to win and then we talk i i I talk about this specifically in um my video Uh, where is it here like I talked about this specifically in this point in this, in this video I found a way out and, and this is in the last tournament of course I found a way out and that's the only way I could have won the game is it the best way to get myself in the best position no does it give me the best chances to win yes because the chances were so low anyway that I had to make this play for in my head for a chance to win. I can't rely on people playing suboptimally. I can't rely on people just making the wrong decisions. You have to assume people are going to make rational decisions. You know, there's a million different things that can happen in reality, but realistically, you have to play to win. You have to try Whatever you can to put yourself in the best position to win, not to have the best game. And those are very different things. If you're playing aesthetics, right? And this is the finals in the tournament or this is like a tournament game. You need to go labs. If that means like, hey, like I need to make an agreement with a, with a Liberty boy that, you know, there's a good chance he just completely disregards. Well, you know, that's how you win, right? Like, I'm not saying go glass cannon and YOLO into a thing. Like, of course, you have to play, like, smart. You have to play to your outs. You can't just, like, see be – you can't be seen as something that just gets rolled over because, you know, in, in this case, right, in this case, um, in this case, like, if, if I'm – if I'm seen as weak by Hoy, um – He's just going to come kill me, right? And it doesn't matter about map position standpoint because he didn't lose anything for killing me. It wasn't very taxing on his sim to kill me. But because it's hard for it, I, because I appear difficult for him to take, compounded with the fact that, you know, it's hard for, um, com- compounded with the fact that, like, it's hard for, um, him to win after killing me from a map perspective, map position perspective, you know, I could totally understand why he didn't go for me. So you can't be seen as someone that's going to roll over because then people are just going to roll you over, regardless of what happens after the fact. It's just, if you're a free kill, I'm just going to go take the free kill, right? But beyond that, we have to think more about, like, how do you win the game? So put yourself in the position to win. Don't play for like, okay, like, you know, I need this player to play completely wrong. I'll play greedy. Like, maybe playing greedy is the right thing. Like in this game, actually, a, l- a lot of people don't know I did this, but I made a deal with Abraxas that if he goes, um, 
if he gives me oil, I'll go. Uh, I'll go land ships. I didn't tech oil. I tech fucking labs. So I built labs. I built my labs on one twenty three, and I got uh, land ships. I think the turn after. Um. Because I was gifted oil. So, all of this to say, you know, I, I'm playing to my outs. I knew I needed a fast lab timing to com- compete with Abraxas on his, like, super uh, super high science game. And, and, you know, push the tech when I could. So, I knew what the kind of outs I had to play, I play to. Not all of these are going to be available every time, but the point is, you know, you have to th- start thinking about what actually wins you the game? What 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 moves the needle enough that you actually can can push ahead? So, if you made it to the end of the video, um, comment rabbit. Um, if you didn't, I don't blame you. I kind of just talked nonsense for an hour, but I I think there is a lot of important points in here. Um, that I've covered. It's, it's completely sporadic, but I hope this helps you in your games. I hope this helps you un- understand, like, especially in this tournament meta, like what you have to be thinking about to win, you know, games oftentimes are going to go late. People aren't going to ear out. And because of that, you know, putting, finding a way to close out the game is what's most important of all. Um, so let me know if you enjoyed this video. It's very random. Comment rabbit if you uh, made it to the end. But, um, yeah, uh, that's it. That's that's how to win the NQ tournament. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, well, I'll continue with the normal, normal uploads tomorrow. Um, and we're going to look to finish the Learning Elect Mod series. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in that. All right. Thanks, everyone.